Hey there, my wedding planning friends, and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, thanks so much for clicking on my video. I'm Emily Summer. I'm a wedding planner based in Montana, and I make weekly videos on wedding planning tips and advice. So continuing with our theme of wedding style, today we're going to talk all about wedding flowers. As flowers tend to play a big role in the overall style and theme and decorations at a wedding. Now likely in your area there are various options when it comes to florists and florists for your wedding. And you might be thinking, how am I supposed to know who to choose? How do I find a florist? How do I know which florist is right for me and, and what I want? And here are some tips and steps to find the wedding florist that is right for you. Number one, the first thing that you're going to want to do, and I'm sure if you've watched my other videos, you probably know what I'm about to say, and that is to set your budget. Imagine that. So obviously you're going to have your overall wedding budget, but you also want to spend some time thinking about your floral budget. Now, when you are thinking through this budget, it's a good idea to make a list of all the flowers that you want to have and maybe prioritize them. So you know that you want to have a bridal bouquet, you want to have bouquets for your bridesmaids, you want to have boutonnieres for your groomsmen, and you want to have some sort of ceremony arch piece for your um, har arbor, whatever you're using at your ceremony site, and then obviously some flowers at the reception. Now, those are kind of the main areas where most flowers will be in, uh, present at your wedding, and then you can go in and really prioritize which ones mean the most to you. So if you really, really want a big, beautiful bridal bouquet, and that is something that is really important to you to have in your flower or in your photos and just... Um, so a piece that you're willing to spend a little bit more money on, then that's going to be listed as a higher priority. If your bridesmaids bouquets are just kind of there for the sake of having bridesmaids bouquets, especially if you have a very large bridal party, then you're going to put them probably a little bit lower on the totem pole as far as priorities go, meaning you're going to be spending less money on those items than you are on your bridal bouquet, which obviously you're going to spend more money on your bridal bouquet regardless, but it's a good idea to know where you can kind of start cutting things out of your budget or cutting down on your budget when it comes to flowers. So in addition to bouquets, um, like I mentioned boutonnieres, and then your ceremony flor florals are typically um, some sort of arch arbor piece, whether that's physically installed onto the arbor or something at the base where you guys are going to be getting married. Um, aisle florals or chair florals, so either something that will be on the ground lining the aisle when you're walking down the aisle or something that's hanging off of the chairs, or maybe this is just a couple of pieces at the very um, back entrance of the aisle to kind of indicate that the aisle is beginning but not having flowers all the way down, or something like that. Then you will have obviously your reception flowers. So this is anything that's going to go on your head table, anything that's going to go on your guest tables, and determining whether you want to have arranged centerpieces, or if you're going to have some sort of garland going across the table, or loose florals or loose greenery. Something to keep in mind here is um, if you're doing a garland, even if it's just greenery, typically greenery is less expensive than florals and blooms. Um, so you might be thinking, let's just do green garland and it's going to be cheaper than having floral centerpieces. Something to know when it comes to garland is garland is actually fairly pricey because of the labor that goes into actually creating the garland into one long strip that can be placed onto the table. So if you're wanting the look of that greenery garland, if you're trying to save money, then you're going to want to go a loose greenery route here over a garland. And then you have your extra accent pieces, like if you want flowers for your dessert table or your cake or any other extra decor table, like guest sign sign in gift table um, at the bar, if you want to have any sort of cool statement piece, like if you're doing a champagne wall or some kind of really cool guest seating chart sign that's going to have flowers on it, those are all extra statement pieces that will be factored into your budget as well. So looking at this list, you can probably see how this can all add up very quickly. And if you are somebody that is not trying to spend a lot of money on your flowers, then you probably are going to want to go over and edit this list a couple of different times and really get a sense of where your maximum budget is for your wedding flowers. The next thing you're going to do is look at inspiration. So this can be on Pinterest, this can be on Instagram, this can be looking through friends' photos of their weddings or weddings that you're attending and looking at the flowers that they did and really getting an idea of what speaks to you and what you're liking. So when you're seeing photos that you like, understand what you're liking about it and why. Is it 
the colors that are in the floral arrangements? Is it the actual flowers that are in the arrangement? Is it the shape? Is it the size? Really understand what it is that's drawing you to that image so that you can better communicate that to your florist. Because sometimes when I'm, I'm meeting, a lot of times I'll do the floral consult with my client, I'll attend the meeting so that I can kind of help interpret those photos a little bit better because some clients will, you know, they'll see a photo they really like on Pinterest and they'll say, I like this picture, but we don't know what they're liking about it. Like they could look at it and think, oh, I'm pinning this photo because I really like the colors in this bouquet. And a florist can look at it and say, oh, she's pinning this photo because she really wants these garden roses and she really wants whatever particular flowers are in that bouquet. So it's really good to really pinpoint what it is that you're liking about the floral arrangement and be able to communicate that to your florist. Once you have a good idea of what you're liking, what you're wanting, what your inspiration is, now's the time to start researching florists in your area. So quick Google search, you can look on local resources like Wedding Wire or like here in Montana we have um, Rocky Mountain Bar Bride or Montana Bride or any local resources that will have florists listed and start diving into their work. Look at their portfolios, look at their Instagrams and, and see if there is a consistent theme with what their style is and if that matches the inspiration pieces that you were really liking. If you're wanting something really um, kind of wild and whimsical, lots of wildflowers, and you're looking at a florist and all of their work is a lot more clean cut, um, round, structured floral arrangements, they're probably not going to be able to provide what you're wanting for your wedding. So once you've found a couple florists that you feel like match the overall style that you're liking, you're really liking their work, and you think that they can create something that you have a vision of, next you wanna set up your consults. So a floral consult is a chance to be able to speak to a florist, give them the inspiration pieces that you're liking, show them what you're really drawn to, what you're hoping to achieve at your wedding, and then obviously talk about budget and numbers and all of that. So at a floral consult, typically you'll go through some photos. This is where that list that I had you make in the first step will come in handy because you'll go through that and make sure that you are both on the same page as far as your needs and your wants and your priorities and that they can budget accordingly and be able to provide you with a um, an estimate and a proposal that is within your budget and still checks off everything that you are wanting. Some good questions to ask at your consult is whether they um, whether they require any minimums. Some florists will require a minimum purchase in order to take you on as a full service client. What this means is that you are required to spend at least $3,000, $4,000 on flowers in order to have them for full service at your wedding, meaning they will deliver, they will set up, and all of that. This brings me to my next question, asking them whether they deliver and or install. Some florists will require installation and delivery services, especially if they are providing you with some sort of arch piece or hanging item or whatever that would require an actual installation so that they can ensure that it gets installed properly and that it is reflecting their work in a positive way. Another thing to know is where they source their flowers. So if that's something that's important to you, if you are wanting somebody that uses a lot of local florals, this is also going to be a little bit more budget friendly than somebody that is outsourcing flowers elsewhere as it's going to cost more to get them to your location. This will also give you an indication of flowers that are available to you and, and the prices associated with that. So if you're using somebody that sources mostly locally, then you're going to be a little bit more um, economically friendly that way. However, you're going to be a little bit more limited in what your options are for flowers. So you're going to be limited to what is in bloom in the area and what is available seasonally in, in your area. Whereas somebody that gets flowers elsewhere pretty frequently is going to have a little bit more variety and options for flowers that you can get in, but you're going to be spending a little bit more money for them. Once you have your floral consult, they're going to send you a proposal and this is the time to, to really decide if you felt like they understood your overall vision and what you're wanting and if they provided a proposal to you that captures your style and everything that you are hoping to achieve when it comes to wedding florals at your wedding. Keep in mind that this proposal might adjust, might have some changes as you go through the planning process. Sometimes floral costs can change, sometimes things become a little bit more expensive depending on the harvest of the florals that year. So keep that in mind and have a little bit of flexibility in your budget for that. Floral consults and figuring out all of the wedding floral design for weddings is one of my favorite parts of the overall design process and hopefully this video will help you kind of get a better sense of how to go about that process and find the wedding florist that is perfect for you. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe to get weekly videos on wedding planning tips and advice and we'll see you next week.